Crawford. Um, I am, my brand is Cherie Nia. Let me not hear it, it's a bad. My daughter is a bad. So, um, and I'm a holistic health coach, but um, as you already heard me speaking, I'm also an educator in Philadelphia. Um, but I'm a holistic health coach, I'm an herbalist, I'm a personal fitness trainer, and um, I was doing yoga, but I need to do it. So I did all these learning things and part of my journey of um, journey of becoming who I am today. So initially it just started off as weight loss and I was like 130 pounds heavier and then from there it just kind of evolved into this whole um, lifestyle change, mind, body and spirit and um, I, because I am a, a learner, a lifelong learner and I'm always kind of intrigued by learning, I decided to study and do some more, some more learning outside of like the our traditional field of education. And what it has brought for me is um, not even bringing this in my classroom, it's just um, sometimes we forget, organizations forget to look at people as the whole, the whole people, right? That we have families, that we have, that we have trauma, that we have stress, and people don't consider the whole person. Um, so it, it's just allowed me in all aspects of my life to kind of to balance things out. And um, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. But I'm also a member of Melody the Educators Collective, uh, where we are, our mission is to make sure that we are um, recruiting, sustaining, talking about uh, education in terms of community, parents, students, and teachers, because we need our own space. Technically, we just, we need our space that we can feel safe to say what we need to say and talk about what we need to talk about without having anyone feel like we're, you know, we're being watched or we're going to be spied on just to be comfortable. But also to go out and, you know, talk to parents and communities about how to navigate through the school system because as educators too, we know sometimes our parents don't know what questions to ask. Um, maybe they didn't feel good in school. They intimidated. Maybe our school isn't really welcoming to parents but they still need to be able to advocate for their child. So we're kind of here to kind of empower parents to do that as well and to advocate for them. Um, so um, we are a new organization and we're growing and building and we'll have some other fantastic things um, coming along for this year. But without further ado, I want to introduce uh, three of my holistic um, folks because the reason I'm bringing you here is because we need balance. We need balance, and I was telling Alicia early, we live in this microwave society where everybody wants you to go, 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 go. They want you to teach, they want you to plan, they want you to collect data, they want you to discipline, they want you to nurture, they want you to do all these things, and then forget it, but then you go home, and then you help your kids with homework, and you take them to their events, and you do all these things, and what about you, right? And I, my, my thing, for uh, my, my brand, Sheree Nia, is loving yourself with a purpose. And as I tell people all the time, taking care of yourself is not being selfish, but if you can't love selflessly if you're not loving yourself first and foremost. So this is about balance, about taking ownership, about being radical and intentional about taking time for you, for self-care, um, and so forth. So these two ladies here are also my friends, and they kind of know that I have like these non-negotiables my exercise routine is non-negotiable. way I eat is non-negotiable. My sleep is non-negotiable. And a lot of times that's radical. That's radical for people to say, well, you have a meeting in such and such on Monday. I'm not going to be there. But you can reschedule. I can't reschedule. I'm not going to be there because that is my time dedicated to me. So I can leave stress at work and come home, work out, go home, happy house, happy life, right? Nobody wants the additional stress. So just find the times to, you know, just be at peace. So today we're just kind of here to get some practices. Um, this is Aaliyah Muhammad. I'm going to let them talk in a moment. Um, this is Ryan. And then in the back is Eric. So Aaliyah does massage. She's a massage therapist. Ryan is also a former teacher out of the classroom because she's like, look, I ain't doing this no more. So she's doing instruction and teaching, but through yoga. And Eric is also a teacher, and he teaches at the Juvenile Justice Center, and he does meditation. So come on in. So we're going to, and then I'll talk about aromatherapy, but I'll, I'll go last. So um, if you guys can come down and kind of give your spill on 
why you love what you do and what you do helps people and balance people, um, that'll be wonderful. And I'm going to sit down. And eat. My name is Aaliyah. I am a holistic massage therapist. Uh, some of my background, I was in Temple for Therapeutic Recreation. Also, within pre med, I decided to go for things that's going to help people instead of going after the money. Um, I, my target is to help people look at the holistic lifestyle. It's not just about um, getting rid of stress, but you have to, I'm vegan now. My anniversary is coming up, eight years. Oh, wow. So it's all about looking at the whole person as a whole. Mm -hmm. You can't just work out with the athlete, but unhealthy. I was, um, I had heart disease and stuff like that. So people are like, oh, you're an athlete, but what's going on with you, whatever. You have to look at the whole room. Um, I got rid of toxic relationships. I did a lot of things and it's working out for me. I love it. Um, I have a passion for this. Sometimes when you try to run, you go to college, you pick a major and you try to, um, it's not for you because you're not, it's not your passion. Then you find your passion, you try to um, run away from it, the universe is gonna pull you back. <laughs> so when you get tired and say, oh, this is not for me, I always tell Andy, you are, you are helping somebody, although you get a little stressed about the system, you're working against them, you wanna do, um, do it the holistic room, a child, you're saving a child's life. So always stick it in, stick it in, make sure you take care of yourself first. And you can't, um, you can't, you can't give from an empty vessel, right? Mm -hmm. So you always gotta work on self-love. Can I, can I just add? <laughs> so Lee's like my little sister. Yes. And when she speaks, I just be over here gleaming, like big sister proud. So when I met Aaliyah about 10 years ago now, Aaliyah didn't like to talk in public. Aaliyah was shy. Aaliyah was me. Aaliyah, I'll be showing off y'all. Go ahead. Alright. The bio part is always hard. Um, but yeah, so similarly to what Angie and sorry, Leah has been saying, um, a lot of what got me into this work was experience, but also connecting the experience with the fact that you, you can't give what you don't have. <laughs> like, um, and I have firsthand experience from doing that. Um, and I had a unique experience to be able to live out my passion, what I had been working for for like 10 years, to be in the classroom in the specific position that I was in, and then to also have my first yoga teacher training at the same time. And I was able to see like the different, like the dichotomy between how I feel like authentic education should go or like even really under, like us understanding who we are as human beings versus systematized form of education that just shows what we should know for, a, for somebody else's intention. Um, and I just, I couldn't, live with like I'm, I'm big on paradoxes I like the whole balance I like even like playing devil's advocate and I'm always like if I have to bring pride into it I kind of like priding myself on seeing the other side no matter how controversial it is but I couldn't live those two sides um, and so it was the hardest thing for me to admit that I had to remove myself in the classroom because again that was my first passion honestly and I'm not content saying I'm not <laughs> in the classroom yet like I have to be real with that. I just have to figure out a way to fuse the two when I'm working within a society that's not really ready for that. However, when Andy told me that about this event, I was like, hell yeah, excuse my French. <laughs> because this is the kind of, I think this is how it starts. You know, like this is like, we, like, I, and I think for something to be so organic and so natural, it should start in organic spaces like this. Um, that it shouldn't be like in like, huge promotional PDs, like look what we have going here, but like really start with, you know, who attract, who's attracted to the conversation depending on who's giving it. Um, and so yeah, like I just, I have kind of made the quantum hard leap to leave the classroom to focus on this full time. Um, even though I'm doing like part time things to make money, make, like to make money moves, <laughs> but I just think that like since I've been introduced to more holistic ways of um, approaching my lifestyle, I just can't turn back. And kind of like how, I'm sorry, ooh, don't oh, yeah. Aaliyah said, um, yeah, like it keeps revisiting, that, that message keeps revisiting, like even if you try to pull yourself away from it, 
like, again, like I, I know I'm supposed to teach. I can't work way around it. But what I'm supposed to be teaching, I think, has always been a struggle. And I think this is finally like something that I've been pulled to do. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, here I am. So thank you. I just want to reach out to everybody's heart in here and just come from here to all of you. I really appreciate you coming out. It's not easy to come and show up after any day of school that we have. <laughs> <laughs> after a Wednesday, after a Monday. I mean, <laughs> so, uh, my style of teaching is very organic, and I, I um, come from a place of uh, meditation, martial arts background, I'm looking at the, the table of elements. I, I bring this uh, mindfulness philosophy into my room, into my work. Of course, it goes against the grain 100%. You can't come in with anything organic or do anything in the moment or in, in our current system. And so, um, one of the things I, I, I pass on to my students is we talk about the universe a lot. Somebody mentioned the universe. Everyone's always talking about the universe. And, and you know, the universe, the language of the universe, if you really look at what does the universe go by? What does it listen to? It listens to intention. It doesn't speak English. It doesn't care what color or what, you know, class you are. It goes, it goes by intention. It responds to your intention. And your intention, your true intentions, come from here. This is all the chatter and the vibration that we go give off. Usually a fear, right? It's all excessive. Oh, I should have done this, or I got to do this. But intention comes from here. And that's where, how the universe reads us and puts us where we are. This is, where, this is my a revelation that I, I've had in the classroom in my life. So tonight I want to kind of lead a, a little meditation and talk about, you know, as long as you as you guys are open to. We can talk about setting our intentions right as educators and, and people that want to live our lives in peace and be able to handle the changes and the tremendous struggles that we have to deal with in and out of the classroom and the, these systems that seem to you know, control us like puppets. Again, it's our intention that, that, that is going to dictate how these systems around us operate. I truly believe that. And I'm struggling just as you are with it. And so I want to pass on any tools or any knowledge that I can to you tonight and, um, and, and any time because you being educators, you being interested in radical healing through education, and being in that field of education are very important to me. Our personal life has nothing to do with my path or my organization or whatever. So I'm here. If you have any questions for me or my experience and you can offer something to me, I'm open to it as well. My name is Eric, by the way, the second. And, um, I was actually going to ask you to, um, before we go into any of our other <coughs> um, healing modalities, to start us off in meditation so we can set the attention for the space and, the, and affirm why we're here, um, just to get people in the mindset of, of breathing um, and just being able to do that themselves. Um, yeah, we start off every day, and, and I, I work at the Juvenile Justice Center, so we do get, you know, kids coming in from constant trauma and um, immediate health problems, immediate family, <coughs> all the things that all of you, you know, deal with on a regular basis. But, um, we do, we start the class out every day, no matter what, and as a form of principle, with a short mindfulness breathing exercise. I don't really call it meditation, but it, it's, it's on the way to meditation, and it's very simple. And it involves two very important things, your posture and your breath. When you put your posture together with your breathing, that's when magic can happen for you. That's when you become all powerful. Okay. And uh, our breath is one breath away. And it's our best friend. You can call on our breath at any time. All we have to do is become conscious of it. Okay. Whether it's a fight or flight situation, or whether it's just you're in the classroom and you have all this stuff do and you have like five minutes and you just need to take 15 seconds to, to center yourself, your, your breath is what's there for you. There's no one else or nothing else in the world except the breathing that you go to. It. So let's um, tap into the breath. And the posture is very simple. It is as this earth, as your feet are flat on the ground, your spine is straight up as your fire. These are the five elements. Think about that, that big one there. There's only five. No. 
earth, wind, air. Your breathing is slow down to the stomach and then back up about four, four or five seconds down and four or five seconds exhale. Okay. All day long we breathe heavily and quickly from here. We're going to breathe slowly and deeply. Slow it down and bring it down to the stomach. Okay. We're just going to do that for two minutes. You can open your palms and naturally have your, your thumbs at your fingertips. And any thoughts, anything that you hear, anything that comes to mind, you're just letting it pass by. Don't attach yourself to it. Only focus on the breath. Bring the breath down to the stomach and breathe through the nose. Of course. Okay, let's come in. So we'll do two minutes. Possibilities. I don't see anything, I don't see anything as being impossible. impossible. 
mentality, 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 there are different, there are different mentalities, mentalities, but just 